Good morning. I'm a few minutes late getting started this morning and I apologize for that. Let me introduce myself. My name is Melissa Ebkin. I'm the pastor of the Iliopolis and the Nyanic Christian Churches in Iliopolis and Nyanic, Illinois. It's a pleasure to be with you here on October 31st, this Monday morning, this chilly, rainy, cloudy Monday morning here in central Illinois. Today, I have a little bit of a rant, but I'm going to keep it reined in and constructive. What I would like to talk about today is a topic I see all the time, especially in social media, and it's becoming more and more common and popular in our society, and that is cutting off, especially from toxic people. I hear it. I read it. I see it all the time. Oh, they're toxic. They got to go. Cut them off. Oh, she's toxic. Got to go. Cut them off. And we have developed this pattern of when someone is toxic, we just cut them off. Or even more so now in our society as we get more and more polarized when someone is different from us or believes differently, has different held beliefs and ideas than us, we just cut off. Don't want to hear it. Don't want to engage. All right. There's another way. Now, I want to say this starting off. If you are being abused, get out. Get out now. Get out ASAP. Go to Dove. Go to a shelter. Call the police. Go to wherever is a safe place for you to get help. If you are being abused, get out now. That said, I want to continue this discussion where there is not physical abuse, where someone is not being physically harmed and put in harm's way. I wanna talk about relationships and what I hear all the time about cutting off and toxic people. So I think maybe a better question, instead of saying who in my life is toxic that I need to cut off from and get out of my life, Maybe a better question to ask is, why do I attract toxic people in my life? What is it about me that brings toxic people? Because relationship experts, psychologists will tell you that like attracts like. When it comes to emotional health and emotional maturity, we tend to navigate those who have a similar level as we do for better and for worse. So if you have a lot of toxic people in your life, it could be that there are unresolved pain in your past that you haven't dealt with, or there could be a few other reasons. So let's delve into those today. I wanna to give you five things to think about. There are more than five reasons why this may be happening, but five is a good manageable number, and I wanna start there. So. If there are a lot of toxic people in your life, take a moment and look within. Ask yourself, why are you attracting toxic people? And here are some reasons why that may be happening. One, maybe you're recreating your childhood. None of us escaped childhood emotionally healthy and complete. Each of us had issues that are unresolved in our childhood that we that part of growing up and reaching adulthood is to face those and do the inner work of resolving those. That's one of the jobs of growing up and maturing is to do the inner work to heal those old emotional wounds. They're going to be there and they're going to keep recurring in our lives until we face them and heal them. A second reason why you might be attracting toxic people is you may be a people pleaser. And this is a pretty common trait. And friends, don't beat yourself up for any of these things. This is to help us. This is to help us look in the mirror and say, oh, this is what's going on. This is fixable. I can do something about this. So are you a people pleaser? So many of us are. It's hard to say no to people, and we don't want to say no to people. We want to help and be helpful whenever we can. And a lot of times it feels good when people give us their approval. 
So if you crave that, if you find your worth from other people saying you have worth because you have shown it to them, that might be a reason that you're attracting toxic people. Being a people pleaser is a very common thing and it's very easy to address, but that might be one of the reasons. Another reason is you may be really empathetic and compassionate. People crave empathy and compassion. If you're that person, then you may be attracting toxic people because there aren't a lot of people who have that empathy and who have compassion for others. And if you are one of those beautiful souls that do and that are willing to listen, people may be coming to you in droves. Maybe you don't have or you don't enforce healthy boundaries. And this is crucial. This is imperative to have boundaries, to know when when to say no, when to say later, when to say stop, when to draw that line and separate your needs from the other person's needs, to separate what you're willing to do and what the other person is willing to do. For instance, if you're a very empathetic and compassionate person and people come to you, then set a boundary on the time. This is when I'm available and this is what I'm willing to do. I'm not willing to solve your problems. I'm not willing to fix you. That's only something you can do anyway. But here's how I'll listen and here's what I expect. You know, having simple boundaries like that and enforcing them, and it's hard at first. It's difficult at first, but you'll get better at it in time. That will help to alleviate some of that. And then finally, and I don't wanna say finally necessarily because this list could go on, but these are a good place to start, is you don't trust your own value. And that, what does that look like? What does that mean? That could show up in different ways of um, that you hide your true self. So you become whatever you need to be to please others in that situation or in that space. Uh, you might not speak up about your true thoughts or feelings in a situation, even though you don't like what's being said or shared. Or you may stay in a situation you don't like. You may stay in a job you hate instead of seeking a different one. Um, you don't trust that you have value, that your thoughts and your health and your opinions matter just as much as everyone else's. And nobody else is gonna advocate that for you. You have to do that yourself. These are some of the reasons why you may have a lot of toxic people in your life. And there are some ways that we can grow from that. It's not a prescription that we are left with in life, but knowing these things about ourselves is the beginning. Self-awareness is key. When we are aware that these things exist in our personality, that is fantastic because then we can do something. All of these things can be healed. They can be grown within us and that's fantastic news. As a preacher and a pastor, I'm going to tell you that your spiritual practices, whether you are a person of faith or not, or an, it's complicated, your spiritual practices will provide you that sense of value and worth, connecting to higher power, connecting to God, connecting to spirit, connecting to source is going to fill you with that sense of value. You matter. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Spirituality and emotional health go hand in hand. So engage in those spiritual practices. Second, you can do this. You can do this. You can do that inner work that will help you grow. And I know it's icky and I know it's hard. It really is. But so is going through life settling for less. So is going through life, battling relationships. So jump in to the really hard for a little bit of time 
and then enjoy what comes after. Enjoy those rewards that come as a reward from doing that hard inner work. Find the people that will help you do this. I can help to a point. I'm not a therapist. There are many qualified therapists and I can help you get connected to those and there are some online options as well. Or find a coach, find a pastor, find a friend, find someone who will help you grow these things within you. I do this. I have a lot of training in this. I'm happy to help you and support you and to share a bunch of resources with you that will help you do this work. Just reach out to me or send me a message. But friends, I encourage you to do this instead of cutting off because cutting off makes your world smaller. When we keep eliminating people, there are less people and it's more difficult. So take a deep dive within yourself, look in the mirror and do the work. As a person who has done this work, who has looked in the mirror, who has seen the things, I know it's hard. I've been there, I've done it. And I know you can do it too. And I'm here to tell you that life is so much better when you lean into these difficult things and address them. There's so much more joy and compassion and purpose out there for you. So that is my wish for you this week. Instead of cutting off from people, look within you and learn how to heal those things so that you can engage with people in a different way, in a healthier way. And then you might be surprised by the people you attract in your life at that point. So if you wanna talk about this more or learn more, again, my name is Melissa Ebkin. I'm the pastor of Iliopolis and Nyanic Christian Churches in Iliopolis and Nyanic, Illinois. I'm the founder of Light Life and Love Ministries and outreach effort for those who are spiritual but not religious or who haven't found that church home yet and the host of the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast. And I want life and health and abundance for you in your spiritual and emotional lives. So I'll see you next week. Bye for now.